Hey guys. So you may be asking where the hell is he? Um, well, this is a project that I've done for my two little twins. I've got three boys and uh, the youngest two being twins. And um, they have an obsession with nightlights. But I just can't seem to find the right one. I've um, got various ones. I've got a lithium battery in, but that thing strobes. Um, this is ridiculously bright. Um, these are ridiculously bright. Um, this is pretty cool, but eats through the batteries. So I thought I'd take it myself to design one for them. Um, and this is this little fella, which has ended up a funny shape um, and bigger than I thought. Um, I could reduce this down, um, but I printed this in clear PLA um, and it uses NeoPixels. So what I'll do is I'll move the camera in closer and you can get a better view of the light working. Okay, so I've programmed the light with various modes because um, you could just use it as a funky light during the day. Um, you've got a fire flicker. You can just do a white strobe. Illuminate up and down. You can change the colour when you're doing the strobe. It's funny how it comes across because it's getting quite washed out in the camera, but it, it looks a little different. Um, you can just do random colours and um, my favourite one is the rainbow cycle. That's really cool. Um, it uses a built-in lithium battery um, that gets stepped up to 5 volts. Um, it's got a protection circuit in after I realised my mistake that the module I used didn't have one. Um, so I've, I've fitted a new module to protect itself. Um, so that means it's just going to run, it's permanently on, and um, you can set the lights to off, but the ESP that's in there, the Wemos, is just going to run, and it's going to run the battery down. Um, but the one thing that I mainly did this for is I created a bedtime mode. And what that does is it starts off at full power, and you can configure what full power is. Um, and then it's going to gradually step down and get down darker. But it's going to do that over like a 30 minute period, and then it's going to get down to a set ambient light and it's just going to stay there. One of the things I nearly forgot to mention was the, and if I zoom back out here, is that there is no switches at all on the light. And that's deliberate so that the boys can't tinker with it at night time. Because it is designed as a night light. You know, you could use it during the day, like I said, uh, but it's got a web interface, so, you know, I can do that and I can do it on their tablets. Um, but you will also note that there's no ports at all. And what I've done is, you can actually just see through the transparency of the bottom, um, wireless charging coil. Um, just as a QI or QI charging, however you pronounce it, um, you can place that in an existing charger that you've got from your mobile phone, and that will just constantly charge the, the light, so the next time you come to use it, it'll be ready. So, which I thought was a pretty funky idea, and something a bit different. Um, so, what I'll do is, I'll switch to the overhead cam and you can have a look inside. So as you saw, the uh, main structure of the light is 3D printed. Um, to design it, I used Fusion 360, um, which I'm slowly getting the hang of, although far from an expert. Um, so the first thing I did was create a sketch um, from this create sketch menu here, um, and then drew an outline of what a cross section if the light would be. Um, I've done a small overhang here, so this is where the light ring goes around, and then I've angled this in such a way that it's gonna be printed from the bottom up, so that's not gonna to be too big of an overhang as to cause an issue with the printer. Um, and then I've done a decent thick base, um, which is gonna house the um, charger. So then what I did was, with that sketch, I did a revolve. Um, and the revolve is around this one construction line um, which is present in the sketch which you can create a line and then you can designate a construction here um, and then so if we go back that gave us the main structure of the light um, so the next step then was to create another sketch and I took some dimensions of the um, wireless charger module on the receiver module um, and then did that as a cutout. So this is where the actual um, receiver antenna will go, the small PCB, 
and then I extended it here and that's why it's separate. Um, afterwards I realized that the cable is going to come out here and it needs somewhere to come out basically. So that's what that is. Um, then did an extrude which cuts into the base. You'll see there. Made it a little bit deeper on that extrude. Um, and then I did a, another primitive box um, and, and extruded that down here. And that's basically just to allow a section for the lights to come in. Um, the second thing I did was I had to go back and realize I need to do the lid. So I did exactly the same process. Um, and on sketch one, you can see I went back and I drew the lid and selected the primitive line, um, construction line, sorry, that we had. And then I had to go back and modify the revolve to say that I wanted to revolve that section as well. And there you go, and that's pretty it. Not too much to it. Um, the only slight complications were the cutout for where the lights would be and the um, charger in the base. So then I've printed that off um, in the clear um, PLA as you saw, and I, I think it looks pretty good. So what I'll do now is I'll switch to the overhead camera and we'll have a look at the actual construction of the uh, device. Okay, so this is the uh, the inside of the light. Um, we have a single 18650, and this is a protected cell. Um, I realized the hard way that the, um, the lithium charger board doesn't actually have um, low voltage uh, protection, unfortunately. Um, I was first of all using a larger battery, but once I realized I had no protection, I've swapped this out. Ideally, I would like a larger cell, um, so I've ordered a protection module for the other battery, so I'll be able to swap that in or something else similar. Um, we've just got a small switch coming off the charging circuit, which is just good when you're working with a um, lithium battery. Um, if you short one of these things out, it's, uh, it's not pleasant. Um, at the bottom, we've got the wireless charger module, um, which just fits in that cutout that we designed earlier on quite nicely. Um, at the top, that's just the PCB for that module with the, the output wires. Um, that does get pretty hot, so I've made sure that there's nothing covering that, and I've got um, the capped on tape on there, which is heat resistant. Um, so that's just one to keep an eye on for the future. Um, we've just got a small 1000 uh, microfarad capacitor there, um, which is connected in line with the power, um, which is just recommended for the NeoPixels just to smooth the power out. Um, and on this other little bit of birth board, we've got a 470 ohm resistor. Um, which is connected in line with the data pin from the NeoPixels, um, which again is recommended just to keep the, um, the, the signal working okay. And I did actually experience some issues with that not in place. Um, so that's largely it. Um, you can see the 3D design and what I mentioned earlier on, the small cut out there, the NeoPixels go through um, and then just work their way around. Um, and it just fits quite nicely. Um, Ideally, I would have preferred the NeoPixels, which I think are the 60 pixels per meter, um, or is it 120? Um, and that would have just given a, a better coverage. You can see there you've got gaps, um, but it's not the end of the world. Still pretty happy with it. Works, works quite well. Um, and then it's just got the small lid. At the moment, it's just a friction fit. Um, may revisit that, because um, I'm able to clamp that down. Um, it's printed quite well. It depends on the tolerances of your printer. Um, so your mileage may vary in that, but um, I may look at securing that down in some manner with a screw or something. So yeah, so that's the light. Um, I'm going to switch to the desktop and we'll have a quick look at the code. So yeah, we've got the code. Um, and there's only about five things that you want to kind of configure, really. Um, the first one is the number of pixels. So if you're using this in another project, um, you just want to match up the number you've got. Um, the second item is the pin that you're going to use for the data line. Um, I'm using D2, um, so you can just configure that in there. You're going to want to configure your SSID and your password. Um, and then the last one is the, the max power. Um, that can go up to 1024, uh, potentially. But I find that these are pretty light as it is. Um, and the drawback is that the higher you put that value, the more current they're going to draw. And that depends on the power module that you're using. Um, I found 1024 fitted quite well. Um, if I got up to over 200, it was just drawing too much current and then um, it was just dropping out. So just uh, one thing to um, keep aware of. Um, finally, I just want to say that I actually cannibalized a project by Brian Locke. So thanks very much, Brian. 
um, and that sped up the design of the project um, no end. Um, and I've just used that for the web interface side of things. He was originally doing an IR example, um, but I've just done that and I've just um, put my contents in there. Um, I'll place a link down below in, in, into the GitHub. Um, so please feel free to take that, modify it and do whatever you need to do with that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show was the web interface. So just quickly, we'll have a look at that. Um, as you can see there, it's fairly responsive. You can just go through, select the items you want. Um, the rainbow cycle is my particular favorite. Um, the main reason I did design this was as a nightlight. Um, so the bedtime option that I alluded to earlier on is the uh, gonna be potentially the most used option and that'll just do a 30 minute timer and count down and just get dimmer and dimmer. So um, hopefully that's gonna um, work okay uh, long term. So yeah. So that's uh, pretty much the, the web interface. So just to wrap things up, guys, I'm uh, pretty happy with the light, how it's turned out. You know, um, I think the kids are going to love it. Um, hopefully it's going to become a bedtime favourite. And uh, I may look at um, progressing this in the future. I think it's got potential for doing a custom PCB. Um, so that's something I'm maybe going to tinker on in the background. So you may see this reappearing. Um, could also be reduced down a little bit, although I think it's nice being a, a decent size. Um, so yeah, so like I say, really happy. We'll see how the wireless charging works out long term. Um, may have to redesign it with a small cutout for a USB, but uh, hopefully things will go okay with it. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, please feel free to like, subscribe. Um, any comments, just pop them down below. And uh, thanks.